Hello and welcome to Seal Club's Book Reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about a true crime non-fiction book, The True Story of the Manson Murders by Vincent Baglosi, I cannot pronounce his last name correctly, and Kurt Gentry. Enjoy, thank you. So, Helter Skelter, The True Story of the Manson Murders. This book is written by Vincent Bigliosi and Kurt Gentry, and it is a non-fiction book, a true crime story. I actually read this paperback book. I received it from my previous place of employment, which was actually a bookshop. It came in quite damaged, and because of that, it was to be destroyed. So I was able to read the, the innards of the book before it was officially destroyed. And it was quite interesting. So this is what I thought of it. So as a true crime book, the main genres, of course, the true crime, crime, history, some horror, biography, cults, and psychology. All of this is covered within the story. So how does the book compare with other books in the genre? And how does it match up with your expectations of that genre? So this was one of the first true crime books I've ever read. It was also the longest. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it did not disappoint. The details and timeline presented was very thorough and interesting. Not all parts of the book was riveting, but that follows the true nature of the book. And if you think about it, it's quite good that not all, not all parts are riveting because the riveting parts are quite often the, the horrific, unfortunate events that you're shocked over. So yeah, take that as what you will. So the summary. Prosecuting attorney in the Manson trial, Vincent Bugliosi held a unique insider's position in one of the most baffling and horrifying cases of the 20th century. The cold-blooded Tate LaBianca murders carried out by Charles Manson and four of his followers. What motivated Manson in his seemingly mindless selection of victims? And what was his hold over the young women who obeyed his orders? Here is the gripping story of this famous and haunting crime which also includes 50 pages of black and white photographs. And if you're like me, when you're reading true crime stories, the photographs are quite, quite interesting. You want to be able to reference them throughout the book. It makes it, well, it, it makes it easier to follow, especially when throughout these books, they do get quite into the legal um, terms and and the speech, which can be quite hard to understand as well in some cases, depending on the author and who's writing it, I guess, as well. So the main plot and theme for this book, so the aim of this book was to outline and inform the reader on Charles Manson and his family while they were enacting their crime spree. It also provides further information and insight into the legal proceedings that took place during and after the investigation. We are informed of the outcomes the main characters were subjected to after the case was concluded. So pacing, emotion, ending and plot holes. The majority of the book was very interesting. It allowed me insight into the trial and outcomes that I may not have had access to if it weren't for books such as this. The pacing could drag in some spots and I did take longer than usual to finish the whole thing. It was quite a, a decent sized book. With occasional pauses to read something lighter before returning, I was able to finish the entire book without too much struggle. I constantly found myself informing my partner and friends about parts of the book I found fascinating or shocking or ones, bits that I needed to share pretty much and being told by them to stop <laughs> because they weren't interested, <laughs> um, which is something I look forward to when it comes to a, tr a true crime book, reading true crime books. Okay, so a bit about the main characters. So in the top left of the screen, we have Charles Manson, one of his most iconic pictures of him having his mugshot taken. So he is the cult leader. He instigated a series of nine murders at four locations in July and August 1969. He was convicted of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in 1971. And Manson did not directly commit the murder. His ideology constituted an overt act of a conspiracy. So they were able to pinpoint that he was the cult leader. He was the one who got everyone else to commit the crimes, even though he technically didn't do it himself. He was still the mastermind of sorts behind it. And then the four other pictures we have, we have Tex Watson up on the top 
top middle. Uh, Linda Kasabian, right next to him. Underneath we have Susan Atkins and then in the bottom middle is Patricia Krenwinkel. So these are the four people who are actually part of the Tate Slybianca murders and they were the ones there that night. So it's quite shocking to actually see pictures of the people put faces to the name. And my, well, the recommendation, so my recommendation, so for those who like to know more about true crimes, like to listen to podcasts about murder and watch crime shows, this may, this book may interest you. It is a fascinating read with a detailed timeline and 50 pages of black and white photos to add greater detail. It has some slow parts, but do not let that deter you from pushing through. The only thing that lowered my star rating for the book is that it does not have much rereadability, in my opinion. So once I read it once, I don't think I'd ever read it again. It is quite dense, but very interesting altogether. So I gave this book three out of five stars. So for others who enjoy reading the scary and thought-provoking true crime stories, I would recommend giving this book a go. It was very, very fascinating. Um, anyone who has a bit of an interest in true crime and trying to understand what makes people do it and what happened when this infamous crime spree definitely should give this book a go it's a very was was a very good read also thank you for watching my review on helter skelter the mur the um murder murders mets and murders <laughs> um please like and share and i'll be able to make some more book reviews for you thank you bye